Hello everyone, uh, this time I will try to teach you the solidification processing. This particular uh, technology is very much important in manufacturing processes such as casting process, oiling process and even nowadays the additive manufacturing process. So, I can say like that the solidification processing is the first step of the manufacturing process because once we make the, the particular uh, steel uh, uh, following the solidification process and that uh, this uh, solidification process is actually creates or maybe decides the maximum properties or structure of this particular component. For example, if we try to make a, a kind of billet. Now, after that if we perform the secondary operation for example, metal forming process, some modification of the properties and structure are possible, but solidification is considered at the main controlling factor of the microstructure and in other way we can say that it decides the properties uh, of a, a manufacture component. So, that is why it, uh, we can understand it is a very important uh, aspect uh, associated with the uh, manufacturing process. Now, uh, what a we can understand the solidification uh, processing. So, in this particular course uh, uh, because this is the I think the first lecture associated with the solidification processing. So, here the first step to understand the different thermodynamic uh, concept associated because that thermodynamic concept will be required to understand the uh, solidification processing to understand the equilibrium of a phase. So, that is why first module is basically devoted to the thermodynamic principles of the phase transformation and solidification before doing it uh, going into details of the solidification process. First of all, uh, what we understand by the solidification processing? It is simply that solidification processing means it is a change of the phase from liquid phase to solid phase and that is why it is significant or important any kind of the manufacturing process when it is subjected to the melting of the parent materials because once the melting is done then through solidification then it is change of phase from liquid phase to solid phase. So, whatever structure and properties has been developed and in a, in a particular uh, component during the manufacturing process that is during the solidification processing. So, if we understand the solidification processing then to some extent we will be able to understand the expected structure and properties uh, particular component. Now, uh, which what are the different areas we can apply the knowledge of the solidification processing. First is that when you do for the casting process because we know casting process is one of the uh, important manufacturing process. So, there we can there is application of the solidification processing. So, apart from that even for the welding also because uh, welding I am talking about the fusion welding process. So, in fusion welding process it is the melting of the substrate metal is there and then subsequent it follows the solidification of the metal such that it is uh, makes the, the welded structure. So, therefore, oil properties and structure depends on the solidification behavior in a welding process. Apart from that nowadays the additive manufacturing process the mostly uh, the most important topic or maybe that uh, lots of development is going on in the additive manufacturing process, but if we look into when there is a in melting associated in additive manufacturing process there also we need to understand the uh, solidification behavior this uh, uh, in additive manufacturing process. So, in light of this application we will try to focus on the first the basic understanding of the solidification process through understanding of thermodynamic principles of the phase transformation. So, this module we will try to cover uh, first is the introduction to phase diagram. So, we will try to understand the different phase diagram. So, what are the different phases present uh, in, a, in a particular structure and how it is associated with the composition and temperature also. So, that is the first uh, understanding. Then we will try to understand the equilibrium, how to reach the equilibrium uh, of a particular phase, what kind of the thermodynamic parameters or variable is responsible to understand or to analyze the equilibrium uh, of a particular phase. Next, we will try to look that single component system and afterwards the binary solution also and how binary solution and what are the different phases to make it and, uh, and then what uh, it understanding the equilibrium conditions for the binary solution all this aspect will be covered 
apart from that equilibrium of a heterogeneous system also we will try to discuss and then binary phase diagram although we have some understanding of the when you uh, started in the either engineering, engineering materials course in the first or second year of uh, uh, engine, any engineering courses there we understand the different types of the phase diagram but how this phase diagram is forms uh, uh, just following the uh, thermodynamic principle that will try to discuss in this particular module and uh, then influence of the interface on equilibrium will be the next topic. So, in that case how the interface presents between the solid and liquid phase and what it is the equilibrium at uh, the different scales also we will try to understand. Apart from this uh, how to represent the kinetics of the phase transformation because all this matter are uh, important to understand the, the what are the different type of microstructure it develops uh, th that is why. Uh, we will discuss all this particular topic apart from this thing to understand to visualize or maybe the, the solidification process in a very simple way. I will try to do some kind of the simulation or demonstration with the example such that we can understand the, the solidification processing of the specifically solidification process I am talking about in case of the metallic materials. Now, we will start with that introduction that means what are the importance, what are the uh, typical critical. Uh, uh, internal things associated with the solidification process that uh, I have termed, tried to I have tried to summarize all these particular points. First is that definitely solidification is an inherent part of the casting and welding process even I can add it the additive manufacturing process also. So, to understand the casting process, welding process and additive manufacturing process at the same time we need to understand the solidification process. Next solidification uh, basically associated with the so many phenomena, but this phenomenal uh, phenomena can be different at the different scale. For example, the so many works, so many understandings or so many theories are available, but this theory can be uh, applicable or can be understandable at the different scale that can vary from the nano scale to macro scale. For example, the in the macro scale if we solve simple heat conduction problem. And there we can say this is the solidification front basically moves one uh, particular velocity and it seems more, more smooth the solidification front is moving in the macro scale. But if you look into the uh, in the grain scale or maybe even lower uh, nano scale also the phenomena phenomenological behavior can be focused on the different aspect we uh, there in nano scale also we try to focus on the what uh, the nucleation forms by addition of the different atoms one by one in the solid phase. So, the difference length scale we can explain the, we can expect the different kind of the phenomenological behavior that is the associated with the solidification science. So, that will try to look or the uh, up to till now what are the different kind of the theories are available. Although actually the solidification process the, the lots of investigation is going on. Uh, in the solidification process and there is applications and we can say uh, uh, rather the more, more well established uh, topic associated with the casting and welding processes, but it is not not well established till now it is uh, understanding of the solidification process in additive manufacturing is, is uh, not up to that level, but maybe uh, we can first if we understand the theory part the solidification process then it will be easier to understand the how solidification behavior is applicable in additive manufacturing process. So, that is the maybe you can say that is the main focus of this particular course. Now, if we look into the as cast structure. So, in a casted structure basically following the casting process uh, uh, then we get some some kind of the in the form of a billet we can get a, a, a material. So, in that case the properties of a as cost structure is mainly controlled through the solidification process. So, this is the I can say that this is the primary uh, process that actually controls or that actually decides the, the um, uh, properties of a particular components. Now, but although if we under solidification there are so many topics the advanced topics also for example, the rapid solidification, directional solidification, zone melting these are the already the powerful processing method that actually control the microstructure, but all this comes under the solidification processing. We will try to discuss the little bit about the rapid solidification, directional solidification and zone melting and also we will try to understand how this kind of the specific 
uh, processing methods under solidification processing is applicable to, to the different manufacturing pr processes. Now, what we understand the solidification because uh, in a single way, uh, word I can say the solidification is basically change of the phase from liquid phase to solid phase. But when there is a change of the phase liquid to solid phase, there is a need to somehow extract the heat. So, I mean to say that heat transfer is involved to understanding of the to some extent heat transfer involved that is why uh, to understand the heat transfer basically before that we will try to understand how the this uh, <coughs> solidification uh, process is associated with the, the uh, this, this kind of the free energy calculation and all, all, all this phenomena may be it is uh, required to understand the thermodynamics first and then the heat transfer associated with the solidification. Actually, we will try to discuss the heat transfer phenomena associated with the solidification to when you try to describe the different manufacturing process. For example, in case of casting process, we will there we will try to understand the heat transfer uh, associated with the casting process and even for the oiling process and even for the eventually in case of the additive manufacturing processes. Now, when there is a change of the phase from liquid phase to solid phase, so definitely uh, there is a some transition period is there and there the formation that transition during the transition period from liquid phase to solid phase there is a formation of the nucleation starts. So, nucleation starts it is a kind of uh, very uh, tiny particles in initially form. So, that means this the solid particles form. Now, when it is grow and try to reach uh, some uh, particular size uh, that is called the uh, size of the critical value of the nucleation that size reach just simply adding atom by atom to this uh, solidified uh, component. So, once it is reached certain critical value then we can say the, the nucleation completes and then that similar way the nucleation may happen also throughout the structure. So, it is a simple way that individual atoms from liquid phase to the more stable position to the solid phase when it is adding and based on that theory we can explain the nucleation behavior in the solidification process. So, we will discuss the nucleation behavior or solidification process as well as the growth of the, the one uh, particular par particle when it is changing the phase from liquid phase to solid phase. Now, the different way, so already you explained that a different phenomena associated with the solidification science, but all the cases we will try to look into how the solid to liquid interface looks like or what way the solid liquid interface actually moves. So, in if you look into the uh, macro scale uh, then we can see the solidification front uh, can smooth in a in a, in a plane uh, in, a, in a particular plane from not so much of uh, uh, a random movement of the on this uh, in the front. But other way if you look into the nano scale or micro scale then uh, if lower down the scale we can observe the uh, front cannot be as smooth like a uh, like a plane. So, here can be some nano scale we can observe some kind of the random movement of the uh, uh, at the front. So, entirely depends on the at which scale we are analyzing the uh, solidification processing. But before that uh, to once we understand the solidification uh, processing then first fundamentals of the phase transformation need to understand and then just looking into the what a phase transformation occurs and accordingly how the phase diagram uh, is uh, basically developed or phase diagram uh, is basically constructed and by just following the basic thermodynamic concept. So, that is the first part of the solidification that is why we need to review the elementary thermodynamics concept before going into the actual topic of the solidification processing and because the thermodynamic concept will help to explain the phase transformation phenomena. But in general thermodynamics in physical material is actually used to predict the equilibrium of an alloy system, but here uh, why we need go for the thermodynamic concept or thermodynamic uh, uh, elementary thermodynamics in pertinent to the solidification processing because that concept will help you to understand how to reach the equilibrium of an alloy system. So, or a single component system or alloy system the equilibrium uh, condition can be better explained by the simple thermodynamic concept that we will try to discuss before uh, going into the actual topic. But all these cases the equilibrium condition situation can be explained, but the rate of the equilibrium I mean to say that at what time 
it reach the equilibrium condition that kind of the uh, prediction is not possible using the simple this elementary thermodynamic concept. So, that it, I mean to say that rate of equilibrium is not be able to predict by using any kind of the thermodynamics we cannot predict that and that is a different phenomena a different aspect associated with that we will we'll discuss one by one gradually uh, associated with the topic. Now, what we can explain the phase transformation? The phase transformation is basically changes occur within a particular system, how the changes occurs. Now, how we can define the alloy? Alloy exists as a mixture of one or more phases or maybe in the solid solution, alloy can be considered as a kind of the solid solution. So, it means to say that through different phases may coexist and they can create kind of the solid solution. Basically, they are uh, there it is not necessary that um, that one can uh, both can solution mean does not mean the always it will be the liquid phase the solution may also happen uh, in the solid phase as well also and that is a, that is one example is the alloy system. So, that is the uh, in but if you try to understand the basic phase phase means the definition of the phase is very clearly depend here the portion of the system whose properties and components are homogeneous and physically distinct from other part of the system and that actually uh, define particular phase. So, then it is very uh, once uh, one uh, single the phase may be coexist one single phase or maybe it is possible to coexist the uh, phase mixture also two different phases and mixture of them may also coexist. Now, for we can take an example also for example, BCC iron and FCC iron. BCC iron that body centered BCC iron body centered cubic iron. So, iron can exist to different type of the crystal structure at different temperature. Normally room temperature it is a BCC iron and above 800 degree centigrade usually the FCC iron. Now, BCC iron we can consider as a one particular phase because the atomic arrangement of the atoms are different as compared to the FCC and other uh, uh, FCC iron. So, that is why BCC iron and FCC iron their atomic arrangements are different. Although the material is the same both are iron, but their crystal structure are different that is why individually you can consider these are the two different phases it is not as a single phase two different phases. Similarly, perlite in particular structure, but in some particular morphology or microstructure I can say like that, but this microstructure is consist of the mixture of the two different phases one is the ferrite phase another is the cementite phase. So, that is why uh, this is perlite. Uh, we can consider this as a mixture of the two different phases ferrite and cementite. Now, the component of a particular system is different elements which fill the system. So, if system means we can define a particular uh, space uh, within that space the component of the different elements may also exist and this, uh, this components fill this particular system. Now, the composition of a particular phase or system is basically decided by the relative amount of each component. For example, one system uh, that is consist of the um, one system this is consist this system consists of the uh, perlite only within that system defined by the system boundary the perlite system, but it is actually consist of the uh, ferrite and it is also might be having the cementite. So, these are the two phase mixtures exist in a uh, in perlite. So, that is why if the composition of phase mixture system is represented by the relative amount, we can say this is the amount of the perlite total, but this perlite having this certain percentage of the ferrite and certain percentage of the uh, cementite. But how we can do that? If you know that we know the this is the perlite structure and perlite I am assuming the perlite is a consist of the uh, ferrite and, and cementite. Now, perlite is having the carbon percentage of 0.77 and cementite is having carbon percentage is the 6.67 and ferrite is carbon percentage is the 0 0.02. Now, this is the percentage now simple proportionate way we can estimate what is the ferrite percentage what is the carbon percentage. So, ferrite percentage we can see the this side the carbon percentage of this difference this one 6.67 minus 0 0.77 divided by the total span 6.67 minus 0 0.02. This is the fraction of the ferrite. Similarly, cementite fraction we can say like that this other part other side this component 
So, here you can simply applying the lever rule. So, here 0 0.77 minus 0 0.02 divided by 6.67 total span 0 0.02. This relative amount actually decide this uh, the we simply applying the lever rule we can estimate what is the percentage of the ferrite what is the percentage of the cementite in a, in, a, uh, in this particular structure pyrolyte. So, that is why overall you can see that that phase transformation change of the phase within the phase transformation may occur within a particular system one phase to another phase and it it, it, it is also possible either from liquid phase to solid phase or one solid phase to another solid phase or one solid phase to mixture of the two another solid phases all possibilities are there. And alloy we can say the exist mixture of the one or the more phases and of course, alloy is we can consider this as a solid solution and phase very distinct or homogeneous part physically distinct part uh, with respect to other in a particular system that we have given the example of the uh, two different phases single phases and one example for the phase mixture both possible. And within a particular system if there is a existence of the phase mixture we can uh, uh, by applying the lever rule or proportionate way we can find out the composition or percentage of the different phases. Then we focus on the phase transformation. So, how one or more number of phases in a alloy or system changes into a new phases or a mixture of the phases. So, that is called the associated with the phase transformation, but why transformation occurs phase transformation occurs because it is assumed that the initial state which state the current state of the phase is not is stable. So, basically it is unstable. So, therefore, until and unless it is not reaching another stable position it is having the tendency to change the phase from one phase to another phase. So, that is why if initial state of a particular phase is unstable, then it will try to change the another stable phase. So, uh, or is the final state and then we can say this final state is stable in this particular condition. So, particular condition means there is a particular temperature or particular pressure this phase is stable. So, that is why we can we can understand the transformation of the, the phases. So, therefore, the stability of the phase is a measure and that measure can be done using the thermodynamic principle. So, basically the different parameters associated to the uh, elementary thermodynamics and that will explain to help uh, that will try to explain the stability of a particular phase. Now, if transformation occurs at constant temperature and pressure then the relative stability is basically determined by the Gibbs free energy. So, this parameter Gibbs free energy actually is a better way to try to understand or uh, explain the stability of a particular phase. So, our focus is to, un to find out the expression of the Gibbs free energy and then we try to see that how Gibbs free energy will explain the stability of a particular phase. So, there are so many things in the, uh, the elementary thermodynamics, but the physical metallurgy uh, associated with the uh, elementary thermodynamics the, our understanding to uh, every understanding or our focus is to understand the this phase transformation. So, that is why we, we uh, a particular reference to that we will try to focus on the we will try to the few things associated with the basic thermodynamics we will discuss. Now, I will exactly coming back to this uh, thermodynamic system the basic understanding for example, thermodynamic how we can define the thermodynamic system three different types of the thermodynamic system open closed and isolated system. We can see the figure also here you can see that this is the system having some finite mass and it is surrounded by the boundary uh, the it is it is uh, the system is defined by the boundary and there is a surrounding. So, with the surroundings there might be having some interaction of the system with the surroundings through the boundary. So, this is the thermodynamically defined one particular system. Now, what we can see the open system open system it, it exchanges both matter and energy with its surroundings then we can see we can consider this as open system. Closed system means exchanges only the energy with the surroundings, but no matter transfer occurs. So, that is why it is called the closed system, but isolated system it does not exchange any matter or any energy with the with the with its surroundings that is why it is known as the isolated system. So, in the light of the open system closed system and isolated system we can understand the different uh, basic uh, elemental uh, 
uh, thermodynamics associated with the three different types of the system. Now, the mass is fixed definitely when there is a exchange only energy uh, with the surroundings in case of the closed system. So, therefore, mass is fixed for a closed system or mass is also fixed for an isolated system during a particular process. Now, there are other uh, state variables associated in any kind of the uh, system and including the state properties. For example, these variables are the temperature, volume of system, pressure of a particular system and density of the uh, system. Now, molar volume, we can say the molar volume is the which to some extent is defining the total mass of the system. Therefore, it is a property of the substance and it may vary also. But pressure and temperature are not the properties, rather we can say the pressure and temperature is the variables associated with the particular system. But since pressure and temperature are independent of the mass of the system, therefore, it is known as the intensive variables. This is very, this is intensive variables, this is the independent of the mass of the system, that is why it is called the intensive variable. So, pressure and temperature we can see that, we can say that it is the independent variable, in intensive variables. Similarly, volume is basically total volume is proportional to the mass or a number of uh, moles associated with the particular system both way either we can represent the volume the, in terms of the mass or number of volume number of moles. So, therefore, it is also known as the extensive properties it is not independent of the mass of the particular system that is why it is called the extensive property. But if this extensive property is when it is divided by the mass then we represent in the per unit mass then it becomes or number of moles then it becomes the molar volume. So, this molar volume is actually the intensive property not extensive property. So, we mean to say that in extensive property you can represent per unit mass or per, per unit number of moles then therefore, it becomes the intensive properties. So, therefore, in that sense density is considered as a intensive property of a particular system. Now, apart from this state variables and the temperature, pressure, volume, density, there are also other parameters or properties of a particular system. These are the internal energy of a system, then enthalpy of a system, then entropy of a system. So, this internal energy, enthalpy and entropy is the uh, properties of a particular system and that these three variables is basically define the, the free energy associated with the particular system. Now, first law of the closed system, we just apply the first law for a closed system. For a first law closed system that is the amount of the heat transfer. Suppose, this is the uh, system and it is a defined by the boundary, surrounded by the boundary and it is interacting with the energy or it can interacting the energy with the surrounding. So, therefore, so amount of the heat transfer to the system for example, Q is the amount of the heat transfer to the system and W is the work done by the system, but it is not necessary whatever amount of the energy we transfer to the system all energy will convert it to the work done that is not possible and that will see in the uh, second law of thermodynamics. But here some amount of the supplied energy is stored in the form in terms of the internal energy. So, that is called the stored energy in the form of the internal energy. So, that is why delta is the stored energy and Q is the input energy to the system. W is the, the energy transfer amount of the uh, uh, work done by this particular system. So, other we can say that amount of the energy transferred from the system and remaining energy will be stored in the within the system that is called the internal energy of the system. So, this is the as per the first law of the thermodynamics system. So, it is basically deciding the total uh, energy balance on one particular one uh, associated with the closed system. Now, what is H enthalpy of a system, enthalpy of a system is uh, consists of the inter internal energy of the system plus pressure and volume. So, at this particular state what is the total pressure and the volume of the system including the internal energy of the system is expression of the enthalpy of a particular system. So, enthalpy of a particular system is basically depends on the state of the pressure and state of the volume of this particular system. Now, if you make the differential uh, dH the enthalpy it is a internal energy dE plus d into PV, d into PV, PdV and Vdp we can get it. Now, at constant pressure if the assuming the constant pressure the change of the pressure will be 0 then 
dh is basically d plus p dv and d plus p dv is the this p dv is the work done mechanical work done you can say and that is equivalent to delta q. So, internal energy and the work done. So, here you can see the from the first law of the uh, closed system this T internal energy plus P dB that is equivalent to the, the total uh, amount of the heat uh, heat energy or amount of the heat transfer that is equal. So, dH is basically delta Q. Now, for a finite process at constant pressure suppose change of the state from state 1 to state 2 then Q can be represented like the Q equal to integration of the dh. So, h2 minus h1 so this is basically delta h. So, this is really whatever energy transfer that is equal to change of the enthalpy delta h and from the between the state 1 and state 2. Now, if you look into the second law of the thermodynamics for a closed system, here you can see the complete conversion of the heat into work in a close in a cycle is not possible. So, therefore, heat and work are not completely interchangeable from this energy. So, that I mean to say that whatever energy transfer to the system not all energy is converted to the work done. So, some amount of the energy is already stored in terms of the internal energy that is the first principle. Now, based on that if since second law says that complete conversion of the heat into the work is in a cycle is not possible then there is a con two different concept comes into the picture one is the reversible process or ideal processes another is the irreversible process or natural processes basically reversible process the whatever energy is uh, transferred to the system all amount of the is can be converted to this thing. Okay. So, that is the associated with the reversible process or basically ideal process which is not practically possible, but irreversible process is the very practical process associated with any kind of the uh, uh, system or that is also called that is why it is natural process. Now, once we this once we understand the complete conversion of the work into the is not possible then the concept of the entropy comes into the picture. So, therefore, this entropy is interpreted as the degree of the disorder or randomness associated with the particular system. Now, we will see the further the what we can represent the uh, uh, this randomness. So, change of entropy I am not going into details that how this can be derived, but just know that it is a in general T s change of the entropy greater than equal to dq by t. So, dq is the, the heat transfer to this thing system. So, dq by t, so I mean to say that when it is s 2 minus s 1 change of the state from 1 to 2, then s 2 minus s 1 change of the entropy always greater than equal to integral of the state 1 to state 2 dq by t. Now, this t is basically one particular temperature it is converted temperature uh, one fixed temperature what is the amount of the energy transfer to the system that is the dq. So, it is then every time it is associated with the some sort of the change of the entropy. Now, if you look into the isolated system, so isolated which does not undergo any kind of the energy interaction to the boundary, so therefore with the surrounding. So, in that case dq equal to 0, if you put the dq equal to 0, then d isolated system greater than equal to 0. It means to say that that S2 minus S1 will be uh, greater than equal to 0 that means S2 minus S1 that means in an isolated system the entropy is always increasing. But if it is a reversible process then d i is equal to 0 that means entropy remains constant this is the this is very ideal situation the for a reversible process. But in an irreversible process that is also d i is greater than 0. So, in that case also that that entropy will always be increasing in case of the irreversible process. So, that means in, in case of the ideal process. So, here we can see that since the entropy of an isolated system can never decrease. So, it is always increased for a natural process. So, natural process means the irreversible process. So, irreversible process, process it is always increasing order. So, therefore, that is this is called the uh, this is the entropy principle that uh, entropy principle means that it is uh, in it is always increase for a natural process the entropy will increase always. Now, if we assume the the universe and the system surroundings and the system can constitute one isolated system. So, that is why so universe is isolated system. So, d universe will always be greater than equal to 0, but it is consists of the two different one is the system and the surroundings. So, 
So, d s system plus d s surrounding will always be the greater than or equal to 0 as per the en entropy uh, principle. Now, in this case that what we can explain these things so, it is always 0 that we mean to say that entropy uh, overall uh, overall system then the overall surrounding if we constitute the surrounding on the system as a one single system overall entropy will always increase, but entropy may decrease very locally at the some particular zone within the isolated system, but it must be compensated by the greater increase somewhere else such that uh, entropy for the total system will always be increasing. So, therefore, now net effect for an irreversible process is an entropy increase for the whole system, for the whole system always entropy will increase. Now, if the entropy increase of an isolated system is a basically the measure of the extent of the irreversibility. So, randomness or irreversibility associated with the any kind of the uh, um, isolated system is basically the interpretation of the entropy is like that, it is a measure of the extent of the irreversibility of a particular process that uh, within a system. We will we'll see apply this particular entropy principle in further. Uh, analysis of the other aspects. Now, here we will try to look into the Gibbs free energy of a part system. So, Gibbs free energy of a system is G equal to H minus T s. So, H is the enthalpy of the system and T s, S is the entropy of the system and T is the certain particular temperature the system. Now, now, if you know, know that in a reversible process D s equal to d q by T. Now, other way q equal to t into t assuming one particular constant temperature. So, q equal to t into s. So, t s is basically representing the amount of the heat energy in supply uh, uh, to the system. Now, h enthalpy t temperature and s entropy measure of the system. So, uh, the Gibbs free energy is the difference of the enthalpy of a system minus the what is the heat uh, supplied uh, of the uh, to the system. Uh, is a basically the differences the uh, it indicates the total energy uh, free energy available within the uh, for a part for a particular system. Now, further uh, analyze these things the enthalpy the heat content of a system enthalpy is the internal energy of a system P into V. Now, what way we can represent the internal energy of a system internal energy of a system can be of the two different types one is the kinetic energy of potential energy and summation of the kinetic energy potential energy represents the internal energy of a system. Under different scale molecular scale here you can see the internal energy can be interpreted in terms of the microscopic energy mode. So, here energy stored in the molecular and the atomic structure of the system. So, this this uh, this energy this microscopic energy uh, stored in the system in the form of a kinetic and potential energy of the system, but kinetic energy is basically atomic vibration in the solid and liquid and apart from this translation and rotational energies associated with the atoms and the molecules within a liquid or gas that is the representation of the kinetic energy. But potential energy is basically uh, interaction of the or bonding between the atoms. So, static energy or potential energy the bonding between the atoms that actually represents in the potential energy, but summation of this kinetic energy or potential energy of a microscopic system uh, that represents the internal energy of a system. Now, this internal energy of a system can change with the change in the uh, uh, parameters or variable. So, therefore, we can see the phase transformation is associated with the change of the internal energy volume and pressure. So, here we can see the Gibbs free energy is the enthalpy H and enthalpy is a function of the internal energy, temperature, uh, internal energy, internal energy pressure and volume. So, therefore, the phase transformation is associated with the change of the internal energy volume and pressure that is why we can say associated with that, that means it is the state of the what is the amount of the internal energy, what is the state of the volume, what is the state of the pressure associated with this system that actually decides the phase transformation will occur or not. Now, in case of the solid and liquid in that case is relatively condensed phases. So, in that case the change of the PV term is very small and as compared to the internal energy. So, internal energy is the more dominating uh, case of associated with the solid and the liquid phase in that case the PV term is very low. 
change of the pressure and the volume specifically I am talking in the in case of the solid. So, there is no random change or very small changes in the pressure and volume we can neglect it and with this approximation we can say that H is almost approximately equal to the internal energy of a system in case of the solid and liquid phase. So, here we can see that d h equal to d e into p d v, but p and v is a change of that is very small associated to solid and liquid. So, d h is d e and I mean to say that enthalpy is almost equivalent to the uh, internal energy of a system in case of the solid and liquid. Therefore, the enthalpy of a system sometimes is called the equivalent to the heat content uh, within a system because heat content means the the in terms of the internal energy. So, that is how you can say the heat content of a system is basically equivalent to the enthalpy of a system. Now, other important parameters associated to the equilibrium of a phase that is or phase mixture that is called the G and S. So, Gibbs free energy and S, S is the entropy of a system. Here you can see the, the system is in equilibrium when it is in the most stable shell. Just now I am shifting to the phases the basic thermodynamics to from there we try to understand what we can represent the equilibrium of a of an particular system. Now, system is in equilibrium when it is the most stable state. Now, at constant temperature and pressure closed system will be the stable equilibrium if it is possible to is the lowest possible value of the Gibbs free energy. So, Gibbs free energy is minimization of the Gibbs free energy representation of the most towards the moving towards the stable state. So, therefore, if the in what we can minimize the Gibbs free energy and better way we can represent the stability of a particular system. Now, therefore, we try to understand the what we can represent the Gibbs free energy. Gibbs free energy already in case of the H and T s T into S. Now, mathematically dg equal to uh, uh, stable system means the uh, ch change of the g will be 0. So, dg equal to 0 mathematically that means it is we can say it can reach one particular stable state. So, dg equal to 0. So, dg equal to dh minus t ds. So, therefore, this as minimum as possible dg is the it is moving towards the uh, stable system. Now, high stability we can say that here there are two different components are there one is the enthalpy another entropy and temperature particular temperature. So, therefore, high stability able to reach and that becomes should be the compromise between the low enthalpy and the high entropy. So, low enthalpy and high entropy this as low as possible as much as possible right hand, right hand side this part T entropy as much as possible H as low as possible. So, that differences can be minimum. So, then it is a, a other way it is a representation of this thing this compromise between these two factor enthalpy and entropy that actually explain the reaching the stability condition uh, of a particular system. So, g equal to h minus T s now we will try to look this is g equal to h minus T s. So, at low temperature solid phases are more stable because they have the strongest atomic bonding it mean to say that lowest amount of the energy, lowest amount of the internal energy. So, lowest amount of the internal energy in case of the solid because at, at low temperature. So, at low temperature you can avoid the random movement of the uh, uh, this uh, atoms. So, other way we can see that and there is a strong bonding of the atomic atomic bonding exist in case of the solid phases. So, therefore, solid the E is the minimum internal energy is the minimum. So, uh, this thing when internal energy is minimum that means, H is minimum is the more effective associated with the low temperature. So, therefore, solid becomes more stable at low temperature because means the lowest amount of the internal energy or lowest amount of the enthalpy at low temperature associated with the solid phase. Similarly, at high temperature T s term dominates. So, second term actually dominates T s term dominates at high temperature phases. So, T s term dominates and phases with the more freedom uh, to move to for the freedom of the atom movement. So, atoms can move at very high temperature. So, that is possible in case of the liquid and gaseous system. So, therefore, liquid and gas system they becomes more stable at high temperature. So, since this term T s term will be very high. So, T s term will be very high then when the G value will be the less. So, the difference can be reduced H and 
uh, T S term. So, that is why uh, this becomes, uh, so at high temperature the liquid and gaseous phases becomes more stable. But if the pressure and all the changes because we, we represent that at uh, constant temperature and pressure uh, at constant pressure actually the when you define the Gibbs free energy in this case the minimization, but if there is a change of the pressure at various at high pressure small volume are favored to reach the equilibrium at particular high pressure. So, it is effect of the pressure if there is a change of the pressure then small volumes uh, component becomes to reach the equilibrium condition rather than a high volume component. So, therefore, that is the effect of the pressure in the in the uh, in the um, to understand the equilibrium condition of a system. Now, mathematically what we can represent the equilibrium system the stable equilibrium see that this is the Gibbs free energy plot of the Gibbs free energy with respect to different arrangement of the atoms. So, state of the atoms with the different different arrangement of the atoms. So, here we can see that Although if you see that particular point the dg equal to 0, here also dg equal to 0, but in this particular case the configuration B is the metastable state that means it does not uh, uh, may not reach the exactly the equilibrium stable equilibrium conditions because further reduction of the Gibbs free energy is possible with change of the uh, parameters or uh, uh, other circumstances it can reach the other stable condition. So, that means here A and B atomic, atomic arrangement of a particular system or uh, that is the B is the metastable state and A can we can as compared to the B A we can consider as the new stable equilibrium state. So, that is why the infinite number of the stable equilibrium state it can reach where we can get the d z equal to 0 change of the Gibbs free energy equal to 0. I mean to say that this is not the only condition that if d z equal to 0 then the uh, then one particular component will reach the equilibrium condition. So, if from the graph it is very clear that it can reach the several metastable stable state and finally, we can reach one particular stable state. So, look state B actually represents the local minimum in free energy d g equal to 0 it is a minimum value d g equal to 0, but it is a local minimum. So, but may not have the lowest value of the z. So, that is why graph we are trying to this is may not be the lowest value of the z, but this is one local minimum exists at this particular point at d z equal to 0. Similarly, the intermediate states for which d z not equal to 0 are all are unstable, but due to the thermal fluctuation. So, may be uh, the atomic arrangements can change in an intermediate intermediate state also and atomic arrangement can rearrange into an another shape or another arrangement is possible of atoms uh, atomic arrangement that may have the minimum amount of the free energy state. So, therefore, the change of temperature or pressure the system may move from one metastable state to another state or it transform from, uh, from one metastable state to another stable state or another equilibrium state. So, that is why we can say that uh, this changing of the one metastable state to another equilibrium state it can change influenced by the temperature and pressure or they are rearrange the of the atoms or they can follow the different arrangement of the atoms and to reach the to minimization of the Gibbs free energy uh, this thing almost having the so many local uh, minimum uh, local minima uh, associated with the different uh, um, configuration of the atoms. Now, one example is that graphite is the stable state at room temperature and pressure, but diamond also considered as a metastable equilibrium state at the room temperature and pressure, because over the time diamond can transfer or transform to graphite structure. So, here we can say that although graphite one is the uh, phase on phase of the carbon that stable state at room temperature, but diamond may not be the stable state at the room temperature and pressure. It might be having some metastable state it can transform to the some other uh, stable state in the over the time will transform to the, uh, the the another phase the try to reach the equilibrium phase and that phase is a uh, graphite. So, structure are different in case of the diamond and uh, graphite. So, once the metal stable structure one kind of the once particular component is in the metal stable structure it can transform to the stable structure here diamond can transform to the graphite over with respect to the time. Therefore, if you look into the over observe the transformation overall all these cases there is a decrease of the Gibbs free energy is possible 
and this is the necessary condition for any phase transformation. So, that is why delta g we can say from state 1 to state 2 g 2 minus g 1 it should be less than 0. So, where 1 is the initial state and 2 is the final state, but once we initial between the initial state and the final state it might be having uh, passes through the series of inter, uh, intermediate metastable states that possibilities are there and that you can observe from the this graphical representation of that. So, many metal stables can may exit between the state 1 and state 2. Now, thing is that all this transformation we are telling that some certain time is required, but it is not possible how much time is required for the phase transformation from one phase to another phase that is actually not explained by the classical thermodynamics. So, therefore, sometimes metastable stand can be very short time span in order to exist uh, and some certain cases the metastables can exist indefinitely. So, therefore, one just we have given the example the diamond at room temperature and pressure at in metastable state for indefinite time. So, the presence of the free energy harms may also exist between the two different metastable states. So, therefore, it needs to cover the this metastable state or the bump of the energy associated to the graphical representation of this free energy with the different atomic configuration. So, stable states can reach in between so many metastable state has to be uh, covered before reaching the another equilibrium state. So, therefore, stable states are responsible for the uh, metastable states are responsible for the variation of the transformation time. So, it depends transformation depends on the what are the harms are available between these two between two the two different phases the transformation time actually depends on this barrier of the energy barrier uh, uh, between the uh, two different state. So, therefore, the transformation is better represented with the uh, kinetics. So, rate when it is associated with the rate of the transformation that is the kinetics, but kinetics of the this case cannot be explained by the classical thermodynamics, it can be represented in the different way. Now, higher the bumps or more of the energy barrier, the slower is the process transformation that kind of the information. So, relative information we can get whether it is slow or fast just looking into the energy harms or energy barrier associated with any kind of the metastable state, but we cannot exactly predict the what is the rate of the transformation. Now, overall you can see the different properties we have ex, uh, we have explained, one is the intensive property, extensive property just I am summarizing all these properties, one is the intensive properties independent of the size of the system. So, therefore, such as temperature and pressure an extensive property which is directly proportional to the quantity of the material of the system. For example, volume, internal energy, enthalpy, entropy and Gibbs free energy all are the extensive property. Uh, but what we can define the size of the system either volume or the number of the molecules of the materials in both, both way we can define the total size of a particular system. Now, extensive properties already explained the expressed either per unit mass or here in this case expressed as a units of per mole. Uh, that is the extensive properties. Now, how you can represent the number of moles of a component? Here, mass of the component in grams divided by the atomic or the molecular weights represents the total number of moles of a particular component. And we know that number of atoms within one mole is the Avogadro's number that is 6.023 into 10 to the power 23. So, with this uh, quantification, we can uh, we can we can look one example. Uh, uh, to understand the, the calculation, the, for example, 15 gram gold and 25 gram of silver are mixed to form a single phase ideal solid solution. So, in that case, how many moles of the solid solution are there and what are the mole fractions of the gold and silver we need to calculate. So, we know the atomic mass of the gold is 197 gram per mole and silver also 107.9 gram per mole. So, we can say that number of moles presence on 50 gram of gold, 15 divided by the 1 and their atomic mass and it becomes 0 0.076 and in case of the silver it becomes 25 is the total 25 gram of the silver presence, but 107.9 is the, uh, the uh, this uh, atomic mass of the silver and from there you can get 0 0.232. So, therefore, total moles in the solution the summation of these two it becomes 0 0.308. Now, mole fraction 0 0.076 divided by the total number of moles in the solution 0 0.247 and other cases 
0.23 to divided by the 0 0.308 that indicates the this is the mole fraction. So, mole fraction of uh, silver is this one 0.753 and mole fraction of the gold is 0 0.247. So, basically when you uh, analyzing the intensive extensive properties their units we had to be careful to look to can we can perform this simple calculation of the mole uh, one particular system. So, that is all for today and thank you very much for your kind attention. Next class we will try to discuss the remaining uh, thermodynamics principle or what a we can uh, analyze the uh, equilibrium uh, of a particular system just focusing on the Gibbs free energy parameter. Thank you. Thank you.